Right, this is part two of Sheila's visit to Compton Abbas in 2008 in search of Daisy and Amber's Mirfield ancestors and associated families. So there's another pitman there. I'm not going to do every one of them. There's some more rideouts. More Foots, Robert George Foot, who died in 1975, aged 73, and his sister Mary Foot, who died in 1976, aged 84. Not so much sign of Mirfield, so I bet they were in here though. It must have been. Do you know what I mean? This is that this is what happens when the names get lost, the graves get turned upside down. Yeah, there are Mirfields buried here, as shows in the burial records. Obviously there's no visible grave now, but um Joshua is buried within this graveyard and his ancestors. There's also a possibility that they were buried in the ancient churchyard nearby, which I haven't found yet, because um, apparently there are some graves still visible there, and I will be making an effort to go back and try and find the ancient church as soon as I can. Broken up, and then the graves are gone forever, and a record of them, actually visible record, gone. I'm sure they said they found some, but that could have been Winchester, um, Shaftesbury, you see. There might be quite a few buried there. So I'm doing everything back to front, not like I planned. I thought we would have seen one near field here, though. Catherine. Stotton Knee Goldie. She died in 1991, aged 90. As Goldie's, there's um, Harry Thomas Hunt, died in 1980, aged 79. Charmian Harding, dearly beloved wife, mother, and grandmother, 1922 to 1990. More rideouts, very common. Maria Louisa Rideout, 1912 to 1987. Ernest Harold Rideout. 1917 to 2005. I'm going over the other side. They've got pikes and leeches, barns, no more leeches, gullion, lamb, hunt, marten. Because I should have got the book out because there's other related names, more rideouts. Rideout is um, somewhere in the Mirfield tree. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but uh, uh, when I go back to Compton Abbas in the future, I should go and take more details of some of the graves whose people are now surfacing as I progress with the tree. Bertie Hull, son of M and E Rideout, who passed away in 1910. Stumbling about Thomas Lambert died in 1926, age 84. Some that you can't read. Baker's on that one, and can't read that one. And under the holly tree, we've got enough in memory of Emma, the beloved wife of. Edwin Burridge. She died 1884, age 12. Couldn't have been wife, could it? In memory of Emma, beloved. Is that wife? Oh, age 42. And Edwin, he died um, later on. I can't read that either. More Lamberts, James Lambert. Ellen Mullins, daughter of John Cox and Maria Mullins. She died 1873 to 17. John Cox Mullins, who died at Barrow Point Hill. That could 
be a, you might be in the army. Middle sex, I think middle sex. 1873, age 69. <coughs> There's obviously gaps here where there were graves. They've been destroyed everywhere, aren't they? There are Mullins and Cox families associated as well with the Mirfields. There's a fox there, fox grave. There's a private, PJ Brown of the 19th Royal Hussars. He died on 28th of July 1919, he's 22, a loving son and brother. One of the many. Their lives. Of course, one of the things I've been doing is um, researching the military history of the Mirfields and others, and I've got service records, medal history, pension history, um, a lot of pages uh, are donated um, to each individual soldier, sometimes up to 22 pages. Um, can be found in the National Archives or via Ancestry.com. Um, all about their, you know, their height, their hair colour, um, how much they weighed, where they lived, uh, their health problems, their conduct and behaviour, all sorts of things. Um, all their um, events in the war, battles that they attended, whether they were wounded. Um, so there's a wealth of information that I've been gathering on the Mirfields at the moment and I will be looking at others. I'm going to go into that, but to, back to the Mullins grave. Not many, just, it's easier to do these because there aren't many. More hunts. I think there'd be one in your field, wouldn't you? Since there were so many that lived here once, they must all their graves must be gone. Must all be gone, their graves. Well, they all moved. They could be there, like I said, Shaftesbury. There's lots of little crumb stones, but no one's looking after them. They're all getting covered up now. So, yeah. Oh, it's a huge toadstool. I'm in next to the church, there's a little footpath. I'm just going to walk down the bottom. We'll probably walk to all the neighbouring villages. That's what I miss, really. In Suffolk, they've got loads of these walkways for people in the countryside. I mean, they've got them in Somerset, but they haven't got them where we know. There ain't nowhere you can go adventuring unless you have to drive there first. <coughs> yeah, because what I thought I might do one day is... Uh, Walk along the river Parrot a bit further. Of course, Dorset's renowned for all its thatch cottages as well. So there's uh, This is a private road now. We're coming to a place called Willis Farmhouse. But it's also said um, it's a footpath. All I can see is sheep. I can see a thatch cottage nesting in the valley. Hello, sheep. This could be Compton Abbas Village, for all I know. Then said farmhouse, so I won't go down there, I don't want to meet anybody. No, there's no sign of any more graveyards, anyway. I think I'll carry on to the next village now I'm on the run. Little did I know that nearby is the ancient church with a graveyard. A bit disappointing, really, that I didn't get a bit more adventurous that day and wander down that lane something I will have to do soon. There won't be any need to come back tomorrow. I don't even know if I'm going to find this place I'm supposed to stay tonight yet. I didn't even ask that. It's probable that a lot of people got buried at Shaftesbury after a certain period in time as well. Anyway, I'm only doing a sort of scan. We have a very ugly looking bus stop. Looks more like a toilet. And you've got 
the old fashioned telephone box. Um, it's quite a busy road. Got a post box. Yeah, it's a pretty church. They're all pretty. Right, I finished at Compton Abbas. So I don't know if there's anything down in the village. I'm going to pass through it in a minute. Then I'll go on to um, the other place and then I'll have to try and find from there where East Orchard is. Right, I'm driving through Fog Mill Magnet. Lots of little cottages, tea rooms. I was actually driving through Compton Abbas. Um, like I say, I will explore this village much more detail on my uh, next visit. So that's the end of that trip. Um, this tape continued on to Fontmel Magna, which I've got under Victor George Merfield, where, where I explore Fontmel Magna, um, because um, he was in the war. He was um, reported missing, presumed dead, um, and he's got a memorial within the church there, but that can all be found on um, the Fontmel Magna tape. That's another place I need to go back to and do more in-depth work. Was, this was really just a scan, um, that visit really. Um, you know, just just a recce. That's all. So over and out for now. Um, I'll be going on to places like, in other tapes, Shaftesbury, Gillingham, or Gillingham, Mockham. Um, oh, I can't remember all the names. There's quite a few anyway. Uh, Ashmore, of course where other um, branches of the tree can be found, like the Beelings, for example. So over and out for now.